Here, so, so stay where you are, and I'll come. You'll you'll want to come closer to me, probably. Let me You're see live. the shot. You're live, by the way. Oh, am I? I'm live. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to Grid Gym. I'm Adam Reese, and for the last little over a decade, I've been helping people with their health so that they can work out the way they need to to push out into their lives the way that they want to. And that really rattled off the tongue there pretty well. I'm going to have to remember that one. But today we're talking about thoracic mobility and how it affects your shoulder. Uh, and if you're interested in getting signed up uh, for an assessment to figure out your individual circumstance, I, I really encourage you to. You just go to the link that's on the page, but it's gritgym.com forward slash PDS. We're going to go over your thoracic spine. That's uh, So you have your cervical, you have your lumbar, and you have everything in between. There's 12 vertebrae here. Uh, and the postures that are usually, we tend to gravitate towards one or the other of these. Either this or there's a huge slouch like this guy where you've got just a normal lower back posture and then you've got like a normal hip and then you've got this huge slouch to your upper back which puts your neck in, an, in, in a not advantageous position huge energy leaks, okay? So with all of this stuff that we're gonna talk about today with thoracic mobility, if you are, if you're missing on this stuff, you're gonna have outrageous energy leaks. You're gonna put a lot of stress into your upper trap. You're gonna hang on yourself, even if you're up in this stick straight posture. And you're not gonna be able to work the way that you want to, produce the way you want to, be with your kids the way that you want to. It's gonna hold back a lot of different things. So if you're this slouch posture, which most people, you know, that's easy to see, well, that's no different than being in this kind of militant upper back posture too. This one just happens to be more socially acceptable. Now, with the interesting thing between these, uh, the lower back was the same. Let's say, let's hypothetically say the lower back's the same, hips the same. Well, the shoulders are going to be completely different in these two people because this person is probably going to rotate extremely well with their thoracic spine, but that's not always the case. However, if it is, we need to look at something else besides the thoracic spine. Now, it, just because I'm on here, I have a very stick straight upper back, okay? This back should just rotate really, really easy. Not everybody's does. So what are the, so, so with this person though, they're usually very restricted, okay? So what are the big three that I talked about in the title? They are flat, these are the three that you need to have a healthy shoulder. You have to be able to flex we don't want to spend a ton of time in that position because this isn't where we want to live. We want to be able to extend, able to flex, and able to rotate at our upper back. Lower back, not meant to rotate. It has one to two degrees of rotation, and then past that, you're causing injury. The upper back has 18 degrees, depending on the, which vertebra, vertebrae you're talking about, of rotation. A ton of rotation can happen at the upper back, and if it isn't happening at the upper back, it will actually impede internal rotation at the shoulder. Okay? And if it's impeding internal rotation at the shoulder, you're losing out on things during your day and during your workout. For instance, at the bottom of a bench press, let's say. You need a pretty significant amount of internal rotation to be able to get that bar down to your chest. If you don't have this internal rotation, we don't get to do bench press with you. We have to do other exercises. And there's nothing wrong with doing other exercises. Uh, but you want to be able to have your shoulder functioning so you can do all the things. All right, so flexion is going into a flex posture. We, we have to be able to do this. So if you're one of these people, you don't flex real well. You have to constantly be working on getting there, okay? Some people don't extend real well. This person probably doesn't extend very well. Extension is extending the upper back. We need to be able to open up that thoracic column to be able to let the shoulder do what the shoulder needs to do. Okay, and if we're thinking about this from an anatomical perspective, your rib cage sits on your upper back. Your, it sits on the spine, right? Then your shoulder blade sits on the rib cage. And then your arm is attached to that shoulder blade. Okay? That's how this thing goes. That's the, that's the domino effect across the board. So if your thoracic spine is wrong, rib cage is going to be wrong. Scapula, shoulder blade is going to be wrong. Arm's not going to be able to do what the arm needs to be able to do. So we need flexion, extension, rotation. And if there is a restriction, we're going to have it's glenohumeral internal rotational deficit. Big, uh, big long thing. It's just, it just means that you don't have enough internal rotation. You're more at risk for an impingement. Um, you're right there, Tori. <laughs> You're doing good. Is your arm, are your arms getting tired? You're just gonna have to, you're just gonna have to get tough. But, all right, we're gonna show, we're gonna show three different exercises and real quick, the first one that I'm gonna show, um, is just a real quick way that you can actually use this as the test. The test kind of becomes, uh, the test kind of becomes the exercise. The exercise kind of becomes the test. But, uh, I'm gonna take the mic in the front pocket. So you're sitting down in your office chair, right? So now we've taken away, now that you know that you can do this exercise in, in your office, there's no excuse to not be doing these four, five, six times a day. So interlock your fingers, go up on top of your head, not behind, up on top. 
get nice and big, pull the shoulder blades, or pull the, uh, pull the elbows back, pack your neck like you're trying to do, uh, to make a double chin. Okay, that's your extended posture. Okay, then you're gonna bring your elbows together, flex down, don't pull with your arms, just flex like you're taking a big exhale, and then come back up. That's flexion, and then we're gonna come back up to a more neutral position, and we're gonna rotate, trying to look back behind us with our head, and then we're gonna rotate, trying to look back behind us with our head, and we're not, we're trying to mitigate the amount of rotation that's happening at the low back and put it all on the upper back. So that, that was run one rep. So I go extend, flex, come back up, rotate, rotate. Now, if you feel really stiff in that position in any one of those, or you feel like an outrageous stretch is happening, you're probably pretty stiff through your upper back. So that's the test. Uh, and uh, it's, it, I'm, I'm, that's fairly subjective because you're trying to test yourself and you can't see yourself when you're, when, when, you can't see you when you're in, you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame, right? But uh, that's one test that you can do and that's one way that you can, that you can open that up. Do six, do eight reps. So six, so eight reps, eight reps, eight reps, eight reps on each of those motions, and that'll help open up that thoracic spine so that your shoulder can function better. Another one that we can do is we can actually just go down to all fours. We can go down to all fours and put our hands on the ground, get nice and long, pack our neck, hand on top of the head, not behind, on top, and we can rotate under to that opposite knee with our elbow, and then we can look up at the ceiling, trying to get a big stretch through our upper back. Okay, so we're getting, in, we're getting flexion, extension, and rotation all at the same time. Not all at the same time, but in one exercise. We're just rotating up, looking at the ceiling, and you want to really want to drive with your eyes, because wherever your eyes go, the neck's going to go, wherever the neck's going to go, the thoracic spine's going to go. All right, for the last one, so that was a quadruped thoracic rotation. That was a clam. Now we're going to go onto, on to, go this way, onto the roller underneath the head. Hands are out. Okay, we're going to reach this hand as far forward as we can, and then we're going to softball throw, pointing the thumb down, try to really pull that shoulder to the floor, coming up and around, and back to the original position. So we're reaching forward, pointing the thumb down, reaching up and overhead, trying to pull this shoulder down towards the ground, looking back behind me. And I'm basically just doing a softball pitcher motion to reach up and around. Okay, so those are three different, those are three different moves that we can do for upper back mobility to really iron out some of the, uh, some of the mobility restrictions that might be up there. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Just a little bit of stretching through your upper back can make a huge difference, uh, especially if it's the appropriate exercise for you. So, and to find that out, you would have to do an assessment out here. And we do the assessment in the program design session. I really highly encourage you to sign up for one of those. Go over, it's gritgym.com slash PDS. Click on that. That's going to take you to a page where you can get signed up for your program design session. Then you come out here and we can help you. We, we're going to build you a program at the end, but it's, it's way more than that because we're going, to, we're going to test your thoracic spine, your shoulder. We're going to look at your hip. We're going to look at your knees. We're going to look at your ankles. We're going to look at your overall movement patterns. But these are your big three. You have to get flexion. You have to get extension. You have to get rotation. Otherwise, you're going to have a restriction that is going to go from the thoracic to the rib, to the shoulder blade, to the shoulder, and then the arm's not gonna be able to do what it needs to do. You won't be able to live your life the way that you wanna live your life. And those are three exercises that you can do, and one from just your chair. You can just, your chair at work. You're just extending, flexing, coming back up to neutral, rotating twice. But um, some people have the stick straight posture, some people have the, have the more kyphotic posture. Uh, it, it, one just happens to be more socially, uh, socially acceptable than the other, but. Those are, the, those are the big three of your upper back and how they can help your shoulder. I encourage you, go and grab a program design session, gritgym.com slash PDS, and we'll be back tomorrow where we're going over another video four of the uh, Shoulder Saver series. Thanks, guys. <laughs>